Awesome, awesome. Good morning, my church. Okay. So today is a special Sunday, if you have not already noticed by all the fun stuff that's in the back. Um, but Don and Anne are on vacation because it is actually Anne's birthday today. Uh, so woo -woo, you can Facebook her, send her a text sometime, wish her happy birthday because she's awesome and she would love that. Um, and so since they're not here, we get the honor of hearing from our outreach pastor today. So, Crystal, no? Are you going to introduce what's going on first? You get up here. You need to tell everyone what's going on first. So, Crystal is going, to, we're going to have a hearing from a few different people, but our goal right now is to connect you with outreach and what is going on at our church. We want you to hear about the things that are going on, the things that are happening, because we have people who are in-house who are going out on missions. We have missionaries that we're supporting. We have local things that we're doing. And we're trying to connect you with what God is doing here, not only in our city, not only in our nation, but also internationally through the church. All right? So I'm going to have Crystal just share really quick about what's going on so you all have an idea. And then uh, it's going to be awesome. So can you give a round of applause for Crystal? <laughs> Sorry, that was a little, no, 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 wait, something else is happening first, we plan this, remember? Okay, so uh, I am Crystal Arce, I'm the outreach coordinator here, and I actually had someone come to me, Karen Horton, raise your hand, Karen, you can see her, it's still dark in here, uh, but, and she came to me a few months ago, and I was like, we should do a missions fair, have a, you know, booth set up, and have people see different uh, places to go, and I was like, that's a great idea, let's do it. And, uh, and then I had Cheryl Downing, she's in here too. Um, oh, John will take credit, cool, cool thanks. <laughs> and she came to me and she was like, what if, Chris, I have this idea, what if people gave, you know, like $5 to outreaches every month? And uh, so I've had these different people come to me and we're all family here. And I know this just speaks from the church itself that us together, we are a fluid building. We come in, we receive, we give out. And that's just who we are. And so it kind of sounds like the body of Christ, you know? That's, okay. So uh, you got my joke. Awesome. So, so I want to be able to share. Uh, but first, I want to introduce you to uh, Bethany and Brandon Baird, who are our missionaries to Mexico. And they are beautiful people. Oh, man. Miracle baby. Yay. So we're going to show their video first. If that's ready, no? We'll have them talk first, and then we'll show your video. How's that? Okay. It has to be ready, though. So we're going to have you go first while well, we're getting your video ready. There we go. Hello. Good morning. It is wonderful to be back with you guys again. Um, we left here in 2012 to head to Mexico, and... Um, we don't know a lot of you anymore, so just the video actually shares a little bit about us personally. Um, but what we're, what's happening right now is that we are moving into an, um, an orphanage, and we are going to be taking over the whole thing. We've been working there for the last five years, and they're handing us the reins and saying, here, take it. So uh, we're very excited about that. And I wanted to share with you just a little bit about the heart of what we're doing. And if you, um, in Romans 8, it talks about, um, it talks about how we are taken as slaves and brought into the kingdom of God, brought in as sons and sonship. And then it goes down in verse 19. And it says, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe. This is the Passion Translation. The entire, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. And so one just real simple thing that we're doing is we're taking an orphanage and changing it to a home. Because we don't want to keep telling our kids they're orphans, because they're not. We have a family, and it's not to diminish the actual circumstances that have gone on in their life at all, but it's to instill in them an identity in Christ and that they are loved and they are children of God. And, they, and these are these children that, you know, yearning for the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Those are our kids. They're glorious sons and daughters. And we're so excited to be able to pour into them and really to teach them that, to train them. We, um, we are going to be training our staff and really 
you know, that's going to be a big focus of ours is, is wholeness, too, of the children, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and so we are starting, we are launching this week a campaign, um, Transform My Life, and it's really to change these kids' lives. We wanted to transform their lives. Um, first part is we need to raise $25,000. Um, so it's a big chunk, but we have a really big God, and it's going to be it's going to transform these kids' lives. And so we're very excited about that. We also have a, a way for you to connect with each individual child, and we're doing sponsorship programs. And so these kids have this orphanage has been there for 15 years, um, and some of these kids have kind of grown up there, and they've seen that there are all these people and faces and. Um, people that want to give and they want to support them, but they're not connecting in a real way with these people. And so through the sponsorship program, we want you to be able to connect with them and for them to connect with you. And so we have an email address set up so you can contact them and send pictures. And um, So we need your help. We need you guys to partner with us in this um, to transform these kids' lives. Um, is the video ready yet? It's not converting. Okay. So, um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for everything you guys have done over these last six years that we've been in Mexico. We could not have done it without you. And I know that every time we come back, we say the same exact thing, but it's true every single time. And, uh, and, and not only um, you know, has it been true in the past, but this, this last six months have been really difficult for us. And you guys probably don't know it, but you guys actually gave us some extra support um, during the November season, like November until now, and it actually got us to this point. So um, thank you guys so much for your financial support, but mostly thank you for your prayer support. Um, the things that we've been going through have, have been wonderful and fantastic. We've got a wonderful baby down here, and, and uh, we've got four children that uh, couldn't come yet to uh, visit us and visit you guys, uh, visit with us. Uh, but uh, we're hopeful that uh, the summer when we come back to do the, the second phase of this campaign that we're launching, um, we're hopeful that we can bring our other kids. So thank you guys again so, so much for all of that. And, um, and all of the things that Bethany's talking about, we have a lot more information in the back. Um, there's a lot of details to that if you guys are interested. So I'd love to uh, you know, have you guys come and talk to us. We'll, we'll stay as long as, as they'll let us. So. <laughs> um, and then whenever the, the video is able to, to play, I'd love to, to have you guys see it. Um, it will kind of it goes through... Um, you know, just a really quick brief, like what, you know, when we launch, what we're doing, um, and then, you know, what God's bringing us into with uh, taking over the orphanage. Um, we, I don't know if you guys remember at the beginning of the year, we kind of had another, we had a couple update videos and things like that, that talked about us transitioning into teaching, um, and, and we still are doing that. Um, transitioning into teaching and bringing um, additional support, um, we, we call it trauma-confident caregiving for um, staff and for people that are working with children. And, uh, right now we're focusing in Mexico, but uh, uh, going into the orphanage is only going to give us the ability to launch that faster and, uh, and with the kids that we, we fall in love with. So, so we're super excited about this transition and it's, it's really just right in line with what God was teaching us and driving us to do before. So um, I'll let you guys uh, I'll transition if we can do the video later. It'd be awesome. <laughs> And we also have Craig Oviet. Where are you at? He's going to share. Woohoo! He's going to share a little what he does as, as a missionary here in Salem to our new. Well, thanks. Um, before I start, though, yesterday um, in our kids program, I told uh, a bunch of the kids that I was going to be here and what, how you guys support what we do, and. Um, Fatima and um, Jasmine and Kimberly said that I had to get a selfie to prove it. <laughs> because apparently if you don't have a selfie, it didn't really happen. So get ready, I'm going to do this side of the room in the middle, because that's how it works when you work with youth. So, okay, so get ready guys. Then the other thing that I need to do is, uh, Crystal came up in the back and she said, hey Craig, you have five minutes, and I smiled at her. She goes, no, I mean you have five minutes. <laughs> at that point, Jody started cracking up, because that's not me, but I set a timer, 
It doesn't mean I'm going to actually obey when it goes off, but I have a timer. So first of all, Dream Center, a lot of you know about Dream Center. Um, I'll just give a quick little thing. Dream Center started in the fall of 2004 as an outreach to um, the Edgewater community, which at that point in time had um, one of the highest crime rates in the city. It was a base for gangs activity. FBI had it on its watch list because of the violence, the gangs, the human trafficking, um, the drugs. Um, the Walker Middle School, which is based um, in that community, was ranked as a three for academic achievement, um, which is a scale of one to ten. Um, and um, Myers, which is our the grade school that we're uh, closest to, that our kids go to, was ranked as a two. And um, so we decided that's where we'll go. And our commitment was to love people without condition, expectation, and to just keep loving them no matter what. And that's what we've done for 15 plus years. Um, I just received, just this last week, a pretty cool little update. Um, the, I've told you guys this before, and it's even on our little brochures, that two years ago, three years ago, um, the Edgewater community where we're based, the juvenile crime rate was 29% lower than communities in Oregon with the same demographic, which is pretty awesome. And I just got a new update from the Salem Police Department that it's now 33% low. <laughs> Walker Middle School now has an academic achievement rating of an 8. <laughs> the average for middle schools in Salem Kaiser School District, 5. <laughs> Which, that part's really sad. What we're... <laughs> Myers is a 5. Unfortunately, the average of grade schools is 3. But what that means is this. Oh, and by the way, the gangs are gone. The, there are no gangs in Edgewater that are based there. Um, our kids are going to college. They're excelling, um, which are all amazing things. And in the past, I've talked to you guys a lot about, you know, we, we do food boxes. You guys are a huge part of that at Christmas and Thanksgiving because when our kids are in school, they don't get food. Or they're not getting healthy food. They're not going to starve to death, but they're not going to eat right. Um, you guys are huge with Dream Dream. We talked about that. But we really haven't talked about what we do every single day. Because every single day, we're down in the community working with the families and the kids. And we work from birth through college. We don't just say, oh, we're going to work with the demographic of this age. No, we work with whoever comes through the door, and we go to them and invite them in. So with that said, man, this goes really fast. <laughs> um, so every Saturday, we have a program where we work with youth. We use Walker Middle School. And the kids come. We feed them a hot breakfast and a lunch. We do arts and crafts. And yes, I'm talking really fast. Um, there will be an interpreter next time. Um, <laughs> we do, um, and we play. We have open gyms and all this. But it's, it's a, a place where we can mentor the kids. Well, for the last year, about the Salem Police Department have partnered with us. And on most Saturdays, you will find between two to five officers who are there playing with the kids, doing crafts with the kids, hanging out with the kids, mentoring the kids, which is pretty cool. This last week, we got an email from the professor who um, oversees the, um, the advanced LEAR, at, um, which is a law enforcement program in college. And he said he is now making part of his curriculum that his students come on Saturdays to interact with our kids. So the question is why? Because the police department sees the value in interacting with the community and they see that the crime rate is going down and the kids are becoming successful and our community is becoming better. We are not the police. The crime rate went down before the police were there, but you know who came with us when we went to Edgewater? Jesus Christ. We did not fight the gangs out of the community. We loved them out of the community with God's love. So we do that. We're going to ignore this. You didn't hear a thing. So then during the week, we have a learning center that's based right down in Edgewater. It will not. You fix this. I'll ask forgiveness for you. Um, during the wheel, learning center that's based right down in Edgewater, where kids can come and they can just be loved on after school. They can have a quiet, safe place to do homework where they have computers and internet and paper and people to help them. We, with 
your help, Life Church's help, we were able to remodel the kitchen. And we're going to start teaching how to cook. And we're going to, because we found out that that was the number one indoor activity that kids in Polk County wanted to do. Learn how to cook, boys and girls. So we've totally remodeled it. We, we reached out and Life Church said, we will make this happen. And they've remodeled. If you saw this kitchen before, it was unusable. It was a 1953 home. And now it's beautiful. It's state of the art. And we're working to um, supply it so that we can teach them. And I mentioned Fatima. When Fatima saw these pictures posted on our Facebook page, the very first thing she, she ran in on a Saturday, she said, I want to be first. And I thought it was to get breakfast because we get a lot of that. And she said, and I said, for breakfast? And she goes, no, I want to be the first person to bake a cake. And I said, oh, that's sweet. Okay. And she goes, and I want to take it home to my mommy and daddy. And, and it just touched my heart that this little girl wants to use that to bless her family. So um, we do that every day. I mean, we're in the community every day, and we're loving on the kids. We take kids to summer camps. We um, just had our Easter program, and in our Easter program, um, yeah, our kids are adorable, by the way. Um, in our Easter program, we, uh, we do a, an Easter party, and we tell the story of Jesus Christ. And we had 27 children and parents except Christ. Last year, we had just under 300 salvations. And guess what? We only preach really three times a year, Easter, and then when we do our summer camps. But our kids will come up and go, why do you do this? Parents will come up and go, why do you do this? And that gives us an opportunity to speak in their lives with the, with the love of Christ. So, with that said, I got a couple of quick questions. She said, I'm okay. <laughs> that is mercy and grace right there. So, um, who in here likes kids? Who likes arts and crafts? Who likes to read to kids? Who would like to be a mentor? Who loves Jesus? Okay, he saw those and you didn't raise your hand. I'm just saying. You, you may want to come and talk to Andrew. You know what? You are qualified to come and love on kids and demonstrate God's love for them. And you know what? We need you. We, our family, this is our home church. I don't know if you know that. My wife, Renee, who runs Dream Center with me, our nine-year-old, this is our home church. When I get asked to preach at a different church, Caleb starts crying. Because this is his church. That isn't his church. Don't tell him I said he cried, though. <laughs> we are your missionaries. You support us. Dream Center is your outreach. And we want you to be a part of it. So after um, this is over, we're going to have a table back there. Come find out how you can get plugged in. We are not demanding. We're not going to say you have to be there all the time because our model is um, serving should be a, a desire, not an obligation. We want you to come when God puts it on your heart to come. We're not going to sit there and call you and go, where are you? Okay? Additionally, we're kicking off a, ten a $10 a month Build the Dream campaign. So if you'd like to find out how to support us, like let's say you're not able to come in and play with kids and hang out with kids and read kids, but you want to support us, we love that support. So I was only over by about 10 minutes. <laughs> so thank you. We love you guys. Honestly, we should just have Craig kept going. <laughs> I am the outreach coordinator, so it is my dream job to be able to connect all of you to people like Craig. Uh, my goal is to just be able to partner in the kingdom and bring the possibilities uh, to connect all of you with your callings. So it is uh, my pleasure to be with my family. And uh, I got married to my hot husband, Robert, about three weeks ago. Uh, we have six children together. Yep, it was fast. Six to twelve. Uh, some of you remember when I was uh, spoke a year ago and I had two hot